Today we're just going to deviate from CB radio for a moment and do a BSR record deck. Now I'm in my 50s and part of my training was in audio. And then we did television which was a waste of time and colour television which was a bigger waste of time and video recorders which was an even bigger waste of time. So, audio. This is a BSR um, record deck. It's in, come as a real in a realistic thing, so it was obviously sold by Tandys at some time in the probably in the eighties. And this has come in for service. Last year, we had thirty something huge nineteen nineteen sixties and seventies radiograms come in for service, and every single one of them has to have the record deck serviced. The instruction book which came with a lot of these tells you to lubricate them every thousand hours. People don't read the instruction books, they throw them away, they forget they need servicing every thousand hours. There's been a huge um, surge in interest in, in vinyl and as such we've had a huge amount of record turntables coming in for service. As you know, you can go out and buy a brand new record player today, and uh, you can see these sub hundred pound ones, um, which are usually branded by Crosley or some other type of thing, which are made in China. I'm not poo pooing Chinese products, but you deserve better. Come on, viewers, you deserve better. There's record turntables out there like this, which are fifteen and twenty pounds on eBay. They're seized up. Buy one because these are serviceable and these work and these are going to work in years and years to come. At the time we thought the BSR was the poor man's version of a Garrard. By today's standards, my goodness, I like the Rolls Royce. Yes, we get the Lenkos coming in and we get some of the other more expensive Japanese brands. But here we are, it's a BSR. The same mechanism is so similar with the garrards that it is with these BSR ones. So when you transport these if you've got to mail something like this in there's these transit screws and this one has been sent in without the transit screws being set. I haven't got the right screwdriver with me you can use a coin. These screw upwards and then the record deck is held against its springs and of course you've got the overarm there, you've got the, in this instance it locks into position. If you're transporting something like this, tape it because you don't want the uh, pickup cartridge and stylus to come in transit and smashing against the uh, the platter and, and wrecking it. This is coming for a, a new stylus as well. There isn't. When I took the stylus out and looked under the stylus microscope, well, there's a hole where the stylus used to be. So... I've ordered a replacement stylus and that will be going in in a second. This is an auto changer, it's capable of stacking about uh, eight records and it drops them individually. However, it doesn't have the auto change spindle, so it just has the, the, mon the um, manual play spindle. I'm not inquiring as to the customer as to whether they've got that, I'm not interested in that, but this is actually an auto changer. So what the first thing you have to do when these come in, as often as not, they're absolutely sea solid. This is a plastic platter on this. Uh, the garrards are usually a metal one. The more expensive or earlier um, BSRs, it's a metal one. And I'm just going to pause the video because the smoke detector outside in the corridor is starting to pip and I'm going to change the battery. All right, back to the job. Now, sometimes the centre spindle, whether it's the long one for the auto changer or whether it's the short one like this, is pretty hard to get out but get it out you have to do sometimes I have to apply heat we've got one of those things that look like a hairdryer for doing paint stripping and if you use that very carefully to heat up the center spindle if it's a metal one and then pull it out with a rag then that's one method of doing it in this case it's not jammed it's a short plastic one no problem put it to one side what we have to do is to remove the platter. You don't have to go underneath on these at all. So what we're going to do is take the circlip out. Just get a screwdriver under there. And out comes the circlip. Put that to one side. 
the platter now removed. Sometimes you can't remove the platter. This one's going to be all right. Here's the tip. Get your soldering iron, put it down the hole, and let it warm up. Because what's happened is the toffee, the, the, the grease under, the, under there has turned to toffee and it stops them, uh, it, it, it seizes it up. So that's the tip today. This one isn't seized, so I'll just pop the platter off. Set the last bit where it's a bit stiff there. Now, these are idler driven. You, you see them on now, but needs new belt. No, it doesn't need a new belt, it needs unseizing. There isn't a belt. I'll just zoom in a bit now with. Uh, and move that uh, around. On this one, it's a plastic cycle cam. This is for the auto stop mechanism. And we're going to take that off next. This seizes up. This is the actuator for the auto stop. This seizes up. It hasn't on this one, but it seizes up. So we'll pop that circlip off there. We'll soon have a bench full of circlips. Off comes that. And what we do now is I tend to use kitchen roll, which I'll just uh, go and get. What I tend to do these days is to, with an aerosol, put some WD-40 on a bit of paper uh, towel or a rag, and what we try and do is to get off the old grease off these items. The auto stop thing there, the centre spindle there, underneath here, old grease that gets hardened, and on the centre spindle. That's then replaced. Instead of using grease, I just use light household oil because it doesn't need to actually have grease on it. Now, I must admit that I've been doing these donkey's years and that's only the second time I've seen a plastic cycle cam. So I presume this is quite a late model. I'm not going to strip this one down further because I don't need to because it's nice and loose. But there's another circlip just here for the actuator for the auto stop. That pops off. And again, you need to get the muck out of the uh, spindle there and, uh, and re-lubricate it. And again, we use just household oil. And I just put a smear on my fingers and put that on. So, as far as the grease goes, in, on this particular one, what we're going to do is to use a video recorder grease. I've still got some of the video recorder grease. I don't know when a video la re recorder last came in for service, but we do have the greases for the plastic uh, cogs. And I'm just going to put a smear of that on, um, and then we'll put that back together. So having put that back together, what I failed to mention as well, is we've got ball bearings under there, the centre bit. And again, we need to get rid of the old grease and uh, put some light oil on those bearings. So that's nice and, and lubricated as well. The idler. Again, the circlip pops off, usually, there we go, off comes the idler, be aware there's a fibre washer and there's a fibre washer underneath it as well. Once again we're going to clean off the spindle there. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol, which we are always using uh, on cleaning printed circuits on uh, CBs. That's the motor spindle, and it's got different sizes of uh, spindle for the different speeds which the turntable offers. Using the isopropyl alcohol again, and not losing that washer. We're just going to run round this rubber idler. And clean off any dirt that's on there. Whilst I've got the rag with the isopropyl alcohol on, I'm going to run round the inside of the platter. Like that. 
with the slightest amount of light household oil on my fingers. Just put that on the centre spindle and wipe that off. Make sure my hands are clean. Put that fibre washer back on. The idler back on, which now is freely spinning. The top one. And with any luck, the circlip as well. I'll just clip that in off camera. Just the slightest smear of the household oil on my fingers on that spring there. And we can put it back together. On the better quality ones of these, you can do that and it will spin for a full 12 seconds. It doesn't on this one. And then we just need to pop the circlip back on there, which I will do. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to put a new stylus in this. It's to be a, a ceramic cartridge in this uh, type of product. Um, I'll just whip out the old stylus and it is a ST17 and it's 78 on one side, it's a turnover one and LP on the other D will stand for diamond so we've got an ST16 here. And we've got a turnover of the ST16. 78 one side and LP on the other. I'm just going to check the new one under the stylus microscope. These stylus microscopes are available on eBay and other places for about um, £7. And I'm going to make sure that the new stylus is as new as it's supposed to be. And then we'll pop the new stylus in. Which is usually easier said than done. There we go. That's the 78 side and we'll turn it over to the LP side and then I will throw away the one which was in now we need to set Turn that off. What we now need to do is to set the pressure of the pickup. The audio files amongst you will probably realise it's about 0 0.9 of a gram. Um, some of the older record players, the old dance sets, will probably be lucky to be able to set up more than um, with less than 10 grams of pressure. I want this to be under 4 grams of pressure. So I'm going to get the um, I'm now going to get the tracking pressure gauge. These little pressure gauges are available again on eBay and the like for about twelve pounds. This is so much easier than the little weights and things we used to mess about with at the time. So switch that on. And we've got zero, zero, zero there. I'll just see if we can just zoom in a little tiny bit. Now we're going to put the pickup on there. And we've got 
that's just a little bit heavier than I would like. We don't have to grind the records. So we're just going to adjust that. Okay, you can now see that's 3.92. On this particular turntable, under the back of the pickup arm, and you can't really see it, there is a knurled little thumb screw, and that is how the pressure is applied or removed. So we've set that how we want it to be. If that's over 10 grams, you're going to be eating the records to bits. And if it's um, on a record player like this, this is if it's under about one and a half, it'll probably skip. Now, because they haven't got the spindle with this, I'm not going to be able to set up the auto put down. So next thing we're going to do is to put a record on and see how it plays. Now, I've selected a single here. Uh, I'm going to select the B side of an obscure single. And I'm doing that because I don't want YouTube to put a copyright thing on my video because it's something they've recognised. Right, we've got that uh, plugged into the amplifier and there's a bit of a hum because there's no earth on this. So we'll... Oops, it's, in, it's gone into um, auto. So let's see how worn out this record is, which we keep in the workshop. Pretty worn out. If I just show you all the scratches on that record, that's why it's look, look at that. That's why it sounds so awful. Anyway, it's one we have keeping kicking around the workshop. What I'll do off camera is to make sure that when we get to the end, that the auto stop is in the right place. So there you are. That is how the BSR and the Garrard auto changer turntables are lubricated. So hopefully the auto stop will now be in the correct position. And there you have it, one lubricated BSR record deck. See you back with CBs.